So we're going to be um, exploring a little bit more on hashtags because this is the closest thing to what Twitter has to communities and to link content together and for your content to be found. Hashtags. So whatever screen that you're at, let's click on the home screen just so that we're all looking at the same kind of thing. Go to the home screen and this is of course where you're going to see your latest tweets and the tweets of, your, of those that you are following. Well, on the left side, you should see something called trends. And trends are going to be either hashtags or other keywords that are pretty popular at the moment on Twitter. And the good thing about this is that we can change the trend filter to show us what we really want. So what I'm saying here is, if you try to look at what the trends are and see if any of them apply to what your company's about and tap into them, that might increase your audience. So for example, this company that I've got here is about internet and graphic design and web design. Oh, and at the moment, it looks like graphic design is trending. The hashtag graphic design. So if yours doesn't say that, that's okay. I just have, I changed my setting. And notice you've got a button here that says change. So you've got trends, and if you click on change, we can um, uh, we can have either tailored trends or manual trends. Tailored trends are going to be those that Twitter will suggest to you based on who you're following, what followers you have, what you tweet. It's going to try to show you content that would be most effective to you. So perhaps you can try the tailored trends for a little while and see how useful that is. Or you can then also click to change and say, well, show me the trends of San Diego, Las Vegas. Show me the, tr the trends of, um, uh, what's the capital of Jakarta? No, that is the capital, Jakarta. So uh, you can show, you can see um, trends in a particular location. And therefore, when you, are, when you have a business and you're trying to reach a particular audience, especially if they're local, changing your trend to a location like that would be pretty useful. Let's say London. So what's hot on London? Arsenal. Wedding hour. Arteta. The ascent of women. So you're going to see these things that people in London are tweeting about. And if any of those apply to my business, we can use them. Can, can you raise your hand? Because people are raising their hands. Yes. Uh, is, when you say location, is that limited to just the one? It, it needs to be one at a time, unfortunately. You do have to select London and use London for a little bit, and if you want to switch to another location, you it's only one at a time. Question. So, uh, Go90, and then it says promoted by Go90. Mm -hmm. And then it has this list. Are all those under Go90? It's no, it's the first one. The very first hashtag is the one that is promoted by Go90. So they actually paid to be up there. Uh, you, you, there is an aspect of Twitter and most social networks where you can pay. I've been saying it's free, it's free, it's free. It is, but then if you do need to reach a very specific audience and so forth, you can pay. And them, I don't know what Go90 is, I'm not going to waste my time and click on it. Some people will, and then their investment will, will be valuable. I do recommend promoted tweets and promoted ads and such on most of the social networks, especially if you're brand new. So you have these, these two big possibilities. You can either you know, not go with any promoted content and you will be able to get an audience just a little slower for free, or if you go with promoted content, paid content, you will be able to get an audience faster, but you'll be paying for it. How much you pay depends on what's the limit of your credit card. I believe the cheapest you can do is like five dollars. Um, I, I would do uh, five dollars, you know, if you do five dollars a week, that's twenty dollars a month. That's not, bad. that's not bad. If you do twenty dollars and have that all for one week, 
you might get even faster results. If you do $100 in a month, even faster results. So it really is how much of what your budget is, and if you're just going to resolve to do $5 a month, that's still going to be really good. You're going to reach more of an audience. Is it okay to reach everybody, or is it tailored? It's very cool because you can tailor it exactly to location, interests, what TV shows people like, how they filled in their biography, and a variety of things. It's very targeted. Question? So I changed my location, and I put like five different locations over here. And, um, and then I wanted to erase, the, erase them, and I cannot erase them. Well, what, what's happening is, as I answered earlier, you can only have one location active. Right here I have London and I have Jakarta, but they're not active. There's just recent locations. I only can have one thing, like Las Vegas. That's my active location. It's not that all of these are active. And these will just, I think they'll go away when you log out and log in. So it's only one location active at a time. Do you see at the top here, current location, Las Vegas or whatever? It's not going to list all five of them. And so it should only let you select one location at a time in your trends. I think global. Okay, so looking at these trends could give you an idea of what keywords you could use. And what I mean by use is, well, I've got the button to tweet, and I'm seeing, you can't see on my projector, but I'm seeing that one of the hashtags, for example, that looks terrible, <coughs> web dev, imagine that. It's saying web dev right there. So I could write here um, our latest post on setting up WordPress. And then the link to that WordPress article. And then the hashtag, web dev. That's what I mean by using it. If it's trending over here, and depending on the numbers, you're going to see numbers also, how popular it is. Now that's sort of like when we looked at communities last week, and we saw some communities have 500 followers, some have 5,000 followers. The more people there are in a community, the more potentially you could reach. The more people there are in a, using a hashtag, the more you could potentially reach. The opposite of that is, if there's too many people using that hashtag, you're not going to be found. So much stuff is going to come streaming through, people will not see it. You saw that I've been, as I've been talking, it pops up. One new tweet, two new tweets, 40 new tweets. So if you've got a hashtag that has a lot of activity, and I can't tell you what's a lot, it depends on the hashtag. One of them here is Stevie Wonder, 14,000 200 tweets at a time. That might be too many. I'll, I, I'll get drowned out. Another one here is 685 tweets. Seems manageable. This other one says 1,400 tweets. That seems manageable. There's a brand new one that says, well, let me cancel this. There's a brand new one that says, Monster My Job just started trending. Maybe I want to get on, on that hashtag that is brand new with, before a lot of people take it over. So if Monster My ha hashtag Monster My Job makes sense to my company, I could use it. How do I know it makes sense? What is Monster My Job? Click on it, and it'll show you the tweets. Looks like monster.com, remember them? They are tweeting about jobs and stuff. And um, let's see what's relevant here. I don't know, this one's spamming. Right now, it looks like it's so new, it's a mishmash. It's not quite doing anything meaningful. On this one, don't get stuck in a rat race, millions of jobs, find yours. Um, aim higher, dream bigger, find better jobs. It's just starting off, it kind of looks a little spammy at the moment, it may or may not solidify into something meaningful, but we won't know that until you actually click a hashtag to view the content of it, and then decide if it's useful to you in your tweets. So those are those are that's trends. That's what <coughs> hashtags or keywords people are using. Um, because what could also appear here, uh, for example, here Lyft. 
Um, these are hashtags because they have the hash mark, the, the number symbol. Kylie Flood or Kyle Flood and Lyft are not hashtags, but they are words that have um, gotten a lot of attention on, on Twitter. Uh, oftentimes these words here uh, happen a little bit more organically. They're not always at the bottom, they just happen to be here, but I'm saying words that don't have the hash mark are, are regular organic keywords that have happened that Twitter has noticed. These, a lot of people are tweeting about this, whereas oftentimes hashtags are a little bit more generated. People are trying to create Wine Wednesday and Expedia Chat and Graphic Design, whereas these other ones kind of pop up a little bit more organically. There is a subtle difference, but the point is the trends tell us the pulse of, of Twitter, and, and I've used it for great effect for myself and clients, that what are the trends? Oh, this trend is hot at the moment. Let's craft a tweet that uses that hashtag and a cool picture, and then it gets activity. It gets a reply. It gets a follow. It gets a favorite. The point is we're sort of getting on the bandwagon, and not in a negative way. We're just trying to get found. Because we have no followers, if we use hashtags, we could potentially be exposed to people that don't know about us, that then they can learn about us and follow us. So another way that I would use hashtags also, let's say uh, for fun, Wine Wednesday. We click on that, it's going to give us our top trends. Uh, I'm going to switch over to live tweets. So, so that's an ad. Uh, but this one 11 hours ago, 51 seconds ago. So AG Ferrari Foods. Happy Wine Wednesday. What are you drinking tonight? So notice how they use that hashtag. They asked a question, which I mentioned also in Google Plus, ask questions to engage people. <coughs> they asked a question, they use a hashtag, I saw it, so did thousands of other people, if not millions. Then we could reply there. <clears throat> they had a picture. Save water, drink wine. So I could reply. Um, the question, what are you drinking tonight? We're partial to a nice rosé. Or whatever we want to say to, gain, to engage here. The point of this is to make a company know about our presence. So tweet to random companies, tweet to random people. They could be potential new customers, followers, subscribers. Like we talked last week on Google+, Plus. it's okay to talk to strangers. Some percent will say, who are you? Leave me alone. But honestly, in doing this for years, that is very rare. Especially if you're both talking about a topic you care about, if you're on topic, if you're interesting, if you're funny, if you have a nice picture, a useful link, you're, you're not going to get rebuffed if, if you're on topic or following those various points. <clears throat> so Jordan wrote, Jay just poured her wine into my glass. Hashtag Wine Wednesday and hashtag things I never thought would happen. <laughs> so that may be a hashtag that was invented by this person and it has no activity. Or it may be a hashtag that has tweets and activity. So yeah, it seems to have activity. So that's another rabbit hole I could go into and interact with people. Uh, I have a question. Yes. So I could create a hashtag that says hashtag how to fight a ticket. Sure. And then other people are going to start. <coughs> somehow interacting and maybe take over? Yes and no. Other people could start interacting. Not that they will, because if you have two followers, no one knows about your hashtag. But, if another, you've got, but another attorney might go in there, but in, uh, attorney. They might not have the idea 
to use that exact hashtag. That's why I'm saying they could. But yeah, another attorney could then think to use that hashtag, and that attorney has 200 followers. You have two. So now that hashtag, yeah, has been hijacked. They're going to use your hashtag and get your traffic because you don't have enough followers or enough clout, enough reach. So yeah, you could make up your own hashtags, and uh, they could be hijacked, but I don't, I wouldn't really think most of us will not experience that. It's really, if you're kind of controversial, that happens. It's up to you. Question. I think SeaWorld got in trouble through Twitter doing that. They're in trouble a lot recently. Yes. <laughs> they asked for, like, you know, what do you think or something, and they got. Yeah, they obviously wanted to create positive uh, create user something. engagement and uh, a positive message and all of that for themselves. And uh, it got away from them. And so, yeah, big companies, that happens to them. Small companies, it could. But I think for us smaller companies, it probably won't. The reason why I may say not to create your own hashtag is who are you? How many followers do you have? Is that hashtag going to get anywhere? Maybe when you've got 100 followers, 50 followers, maybe make your own hashtags. But at the moment, I would say look at existing hashtags and piggyback on them. As you start to get followers, popularity breeds popularity. You'll get more followers, more followers on top of that. And then you can have a little bit more clout and control of your hashtags. So good thing today is Wine Wednesday because boy do I need a glass. So I could reply to that, maybe I am a DUI attorney, and I could tweet here like, yes, enjoy that glass, drink responsibly. Here's my card. You know, something like that to, to get the conversation going, something funny or interesting. It really depends on the character of your company. Maybe your company is not into humor, and that's fine. It is, it's a serious topic. So reply to them and, and say something like, you know, good wine is good, but remember to drive safe. You know, you don't have to always have the hard sell about, here's my address, here's my link, buy now. You know, start a rapport, be social with social media. I might get a follow back from Lauren, and then eventually at some point when things do go south and they need that attorney, uh, perhaps they think about who was that DUI account uh, that reached out to me on Twitter. So is other people going to see that too? Yes. Other people could see that. This is all public. So actually somebody else could see it and say, hey, I need an attorney. <laughs> right? Sorry, could you repeat that? I was distracted. I said, so actually you could just answer her and, you know, saying, here's my card or whatever, mm -hmm. and then somebody else could see that and say, hey, I do need an attorney. Yeah, and yeah that's, one of the, that's one of the good byproducts, because it is public. Mm -hmm. uh, other people could see it and take, take you up on it. We do have that direct messaging uh, system if, if it needs to be private. Remember to uh, raise your hand, please. There was a question right behind you. Yes. What's Vine? Is it like Twitter? Um, Vine is little short six second video clips. Vine is technically a, like a mini company, a subsidiary of Twitter, uh, and it's an app. You can make these short little videos, little six second videos that loop over and over like those cats, and then you can share your vines on Twitter. Um, and these are pretty popular, and that's just another way to get more attention. Uh, one of these was a GIF, I think. This is this one's a video. If it's a GIF, it'll say <laughs> GIF in the corner. Yes. Oh, you can't see that on. You can't see that in Instagram, but fine. You can't see that on Instagram. No. Oh. Vine is a competitor to Instagram because Instagram also has short videos. Okay. <clears throat> yes? So are those videos on hashtag Wine Wednesday? I th I th think so. Let's let's Is go back. Where we are now? I'm still on Wine Wednesday. But yeah, this one right here. Somebody contributed that to Wine Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, and they and they they spammed it, I would say, because they put Happy Hump Day, Fun Tweet, Boulder, Colorado, Colorado, only in Boulder, Wine Wednesday. First of all, too many hashtags. And how do these cats relate to Wine Wednesday? So I think oh, I it's spam. See. I see all those okay. Hashtag kittens. 
hashtag, right? these are all linked. I can click on kittens and spend all day looking at that. I won't, but all of these are active links to more content on that hashtag. Okay, I just, I just got the notification on my phone, and I'm going to get the notification here on, on Twitter in a moment. The account that a moment ago I had said, I like a nice rosé, they, um, they interacted. Uh, I would get the pop-up here, and there it is. AG Ferrari Foods favorited my tweet. So AG Ferrari Foods at least knows I exist. I, it, they at least know my company exists. They did the lowest form of the interaction. Obviously not the worst. They gave me a favorite. The next level up could have been a retweet if it was especially witty. The next level up could have been a reply, you know, saying like, oh, we, we like rosé too. Here's our favorite rosé, 1999, whatever. And then the best one, of course, would have been a follow. But you give what you get. I I added a comment. I got a reply. I'm going to do that to other companies. I'll get that back. It's it's all interconnected. It's the social and social media. Question: Is your etiquette on if say you have something favor to do you email them back saying thank you or that? It's very open ended. I think someone earlier said there's no ethics on the internet. There's also no uh, etiquette on the internet. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, uh, again, you give what you get. So if you continue that interaction, I got another notification right there. Um, I got a reply actually. So AG Ferrari Foods replied, salute. Okay, they're interacting with me. Uh, that's the next level up. Maybe I will get eventually a follow. But the point is, if I if I get favorites, I could give favorites back. I could reply back and say thank you for that. Maybe simply saying thank you or salute is a little bit of a dead end. Continue it with a question or a picture or something that keeps the ball rolling. This is good. There's some activity here. Um, the people that follow AG Ferrari saw then that they replied to me. So then they might say, oh, why is Ferrari replying? Not that Ferrari, but Re Ferrari is replying to VMC Inc. What's VMC Inc.? Maybe they look at my account, they look at some of my pictures that they favorite. Maybe I re get a reply, maybe I get a follow. That's why I need content on my page. So that when people check out my page, I have something to give them. Don't come, uh, you know, don't come with gifts to the party. When someone checks out your Twitter account, make sure you've got stuff for people to, to, to like and to follow and to interact with. So, I just decided to follow this bar called the Tower Bar. Mm -hmm. It's a rounded bar. Mm -hmm. but the hope is that the people who are following them will see me mm -hmm. and that it will DUI to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a great tactic. Follow accounts of, you know, there's a middleman. You want to get eventually to the people drinking there, the middleman is the bar. Yeah. So Follow that account, interact with that account, interact with the people that are following that account. I'm going to go look at Ferrari Foods here, and I can see right here, who are their followers? Who are they following? Now that I have an account, I can click on who are their followers, and I can start interacting with all of these people. I can look at who did they deem enough to follow, or esteem enough to follow, they're following Caviar East Bay, Chef uh, Natale Giunta, and so Cheese Report, Lemon Coco, and I could go in here, it's pretty endless, there's lots of connections. Prosciutto di Parma, I could click follow to them, I could click reply, I'm going to click on their account, what are they about? Pizza, prosciutto, beer, etc. Then I can start interacting with them. Oh, I see Andrew, Andrew Zimmern follows them. So... It's interacting with people, being social, connections. This thing that we're talking about now should not be totally new just because it's Twitter. We talked about these similar things on Google+. And we're going to talk again these similar things on Facebook and Pinterest and YouTube, etc. The icons may be different than the terminology and such, but it's all related. We'll take one or two final questions because we're coming to the end of the day. Again, do it. Log in, create an account, follow hashtag. I don't know what a hashtag is. Click on it, see what happens. Question. Um, I think when you can set up Instagram so that if you post a picture there, it will also blast out to your Twitter and your Facebook and all these other things. Mm -hmm. 
So are there ways within this to connect to your other... I will recommend something better. There's this website called Buffer.com. Buffer.com allows you to log into a variety of social networks, consolidate them into one account, Buffer, and then you post something to Buffer and it will automatically go to a variety of networks. Not all of them, like Instagram, you cannot blast out from Buffer to Instagram, but you can to other networks. What this does is it saves you that effort of going from platform to platform to post something. There's a downside, however, which I'll mention. Question? Um, does, does it one um, involves more um, more social media one because so, there's the hoot suite that the one I use mm -hmm. and um, it's actually they've been cutting off a whole bunch of them lately and you think buffer have you tried hoot suite not very recently I haven't tried hoot suite very recently but this is a competitor hoot suite and buffer are competitors and there's a bunch of them out there and I haven't used it recently, so it's unfortunate that you're saying that they're removing some of the connections. Uh, Buffer, um, you know, they may or may not have the same amount. We can look up what they each what they do, but um, this oftentimes is the result of the social network itself wanting to be removed from Buffer or Hootsuite. So unfortunately, if the social network doesn't want to be accessible by these other aggregators, then we can't we can't do it. And another thing, what she talked about the Instagram, that mm -hmm. you can actually put on LinkedIn, Tumblr, da 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 da. Yes, if you just do phrase, but if you put like a video or a picture, it goes to to Twitter, Twitter specifically, but it doesn't actually show that picture or that video over there. It, it says your phrase, and then the link that goes to um, Instagram. So, so a lot of these a lot of these networks used to be very interconnected but then eventually they started to you know wall themselves off from their competitors because these are all competitors so in the old days you could tweet I mean you could post something on Instagram and automatically share it to Twitter and you would see your text and your picture then eventually Twitter said never mind about that so they disconnected some of the ability and now when you put your picture on Instagram and share it to Twitter it will only show your text not your picture. It'll show a link back to Instagram to see the picture. So it's not as useful as it used to be. Uh, so that's the companies themselves deciding how the system works. And Hootsuite and Buffer are two ways that help you manage all of these things because yes, I've got to run my company and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. Short answer is yes. The long answer is that there's various tools you can specify which of them are more effective to you after figuring out, you know, after setting up a YouTube and trying it for a month, setting up Twitter and trying it for a month. Eventually you'll figure out which of them works best and maybe devote more of your time to one network. But at the beginning it's a good idea to try a variety of networks to find that target audience. And actually, even though this is a very useful tool, all of these that, that post multiple places for you, uh, I still think it's a little better to do it manually because remember Twitter has a hundred and forty character limit I can write a whole paragraph on Facebook but when that automatically gets published from my buffer over to Twitter it's gonna cut it off to the first sentence awkwardly and then show you a link back to the original post on Facebook anyway so if you craft your message per platform because again I would not write a paragraph on Instagram it's all about the photos I would put a great photo on Instagram and put a uh, put a link, but the thing is that links are not active on on Instagram. Hashtags are active, but not links. So each each network has its own quirks and its own character and demographics. So this is a good starting point to help you manage it all. But really, like when my company does it, we craft the message per platform, which is more work, obviously. Last question. My question is, when's lunch? <laughs> uh, so we're going to end the main lecture here. When we come back next time, we'll talk about Facebook. We're going to reiterate various things that we've talked about already with the quirks of Facebook and the best practices, of course. So again, you don't need to have a Facebook account set up. Next time, we'll do one together. 
but I will let you know by Google Plus we need a personal account first before building uh, business ones. But you don't need to put anything personal. You don't need to put your, your high school and your favorite book and any of that personal stuff. We just need a personal login and then we can create business pages. We'll do that when we come back. So, 